All right. This uh this one's kind of funny. I you had sent this to me and uh I I start I was like, where is he getting this from? And then I realized that there was something going on on Twitter about the 49ers age. So the question is just simple. Are the 49ers too old? And what does that mean exactly? Like wh- are they too old and and where explain the situation to me? Like yeah, why so, is this I mean, topic of conversation? And shout out to your boy uh David because he kind of sparked this in my head. So he's mm-hmm. been putting up that the 49ers are one of the oldest teams in the in the league based off of adjusted play rate. So they're, you know, top four, I think, as far as oldest teams, as far as when you factor in who's playing most of the time. And, uh, you know, because th- then the, it comes into strategy. His, his thought process was because they're an older team, you don't bring in older vets to a team that's already older. You got to get younger type of situation. But for me, when I look at it, and, and you know, before I answer, I, I want to, throw it to you because I know how you feel based off of the answer you gave me when I, when I asked the question to you, but I want to ask you, you know, obviously I think your answer is they are too old, but to me, let's say there's 22 starters on offense and defense, Jesse, to you, what is the ideal combination? How many of those 22 starters would you want on their rookie contract for it to be considered like a healthy makeup? No, I, I actually don't think they're too old. I was messing with you because um, <laughs> I saw that you would put it as a topic. I, I think what's interesting about the 49ers is that they they are older. And when you look at the way this team is constructed, a lot of times we talk about how much money these guys are getting paid. Really, the reason that we keep saying like, hey, this was their best chance to win. And then next year's their real last chance, like with this core unit isn't because of the money that they're being paid. It really is because of the age. They're they're starting to age themselves out of being guys that are worth paying. And this is the first time in Shanahan's career as a head coach where we're going to have to see him go make these tough decisions on does he cut a guy a year early versus hanging on to him a year late? How does he handle things business-wise versus you know maybe guys that he really likes a lot and has built this whole thing with? So I'm curious to see how he handles some of these older players, but the, I think the 49ers have decent balance. Where the 49ers are on the verge of potentially being in trouble is with a trade like a Legarius Sneed or Patrick Sertan. It's like, yes, that's awesome. You're adding a lot of talent, but if you're giving up draft picks to do it also, there's only so much that you can add that way, and you have to have depth. And what we saw from the 49ers this year is at times after five and six week stretches, they did look a little bit old and they did look like they could use a bye week to kind of get over the hump, especially defensively. So for the 49ers, I think that depth has always been important, but no, they're not too old. I mean, if you really look at it, they have some older players, guys that they really should be making decisions on here soon. Trent Williams, Kyle Juszczyk, uh, Eric Armstead. Hargrave, Kittle, and then Debo and CMC aren't old, but for the style that they play and the position that they play, they kind of are getting towards the tail end. So they have seven guys that are like a year away, potentially from being a year away, if you know what I mean. So they're close. They're definitely teetering. That's why drafting this year and next year is going to be so important to try to replace some of these guys because eventually they are going to have to make decisions. Not that those guys are necessarily going to retire next year, but a guy or two out of that bunch certainly are going to have to be let go and maybe more than that. So they're close, man. They really are close. Now they have some good young talent though, too. You have Brock Purdy, you have Brandon Ayuk, you have Demo, um, you have Demo, Charvarius Ward, Huff, Banks, uh, both linebackers, you know what I mean? Bosa. So it's not like they're just like super old, but they do have a a crop of older players that are also core players that they really have to pivot on and move on from very, very quickly here. Otherwise it's going to be too late and and you really are going to put yourself in purgatory for a couple of years. Yeah. But I also, I just, once again, you know, it's doom and gloom content creators that I feel like create this and I get it like, yeah, but to me, I think the 49ers have always done great 
finding bona fide stars and bona fide depth pieces and bona fide starters through the draft and having 11 picks next year, they're going to have you no know, double digit picks as well. Like they have full ability. So the reason why you would say that is if you don't have trust that the 49ers are going to be able to get draft well. And I just don't, I don't see how you can say that when they pretty much pick an all pro player in every single draft class, like it seems like, right. So to me, that's where, that's where I'm just like, you know, Hey, they're, they're, you know, when, when I'm seeing this online, I'm just like, yeah, they're, they're older, but they're also, they don't play rookies, right? Kyle Shanahan doesn't play rookies. He plays second year starters. So you switch out a couple of, you know, like next year, Tayshawn Gibson isn't going to probably be a starter. He's what older it's going to be Jair Brown and Kafunga. Both of those guys are in their early twenties. So like that's our automatically going to change that dynamic. Um, you know, uh, Samuel Womack will probably get more run next year. Luter Jr. is going to get more run next year. So it's like, to me, I just I just think that it's always doom and gloom, and I'm kind of trying to bring the sunshine. Bro, I'm trying to bring the sunshine of logic out here to let people know, look, it's not as bad as people are trying to say it is. There's a bench, there's young guys, and these guys, we're going to draft well, and we're going to be fine. I don't, I don't think, I mean, at least I'm not trying to sell it as doom and gloom. Hopefully that's not the way it's coming across. I'm just saying that they, they, those guys that I mentioned are guys they have to make a decision on in the next year. They do. I mean, it's just the reality of the situation. You, you either continue. Let me ask you this. Players that are on this team, just realistically and looking at how the NFL has always operated out of, let's say the 10 best players on this team. How many of them do you think realistically are going to retire as San Francisco 49ers? Um, so can we go through them? Because it's hard just to give a number. I think Trent sure. is going to retire. Fred okay. Warner will retire. I'll give you Trent. Bosa will retire. Um, I think Ayuk will retire. Um, CMC will retire. 49er. Juszczyk. Kittle. See, I just don't, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I, I would say out of the 10, maybe two will just realistically, the way the league has always worked and always operated. It's like you, you're going to have a player that really wants to play that one extra year. And it's like, dude, I, I'll give you an example. Do you think Patriots fans thought that Gronkowski and, and Tom Brady weren't going to retire as Patriots? Yeah, but I, we also know those are bad decisions. It's not, I'm not saying whether it's a good decision or a bad decision. I'm just saying the way that the NFL operates. I mean, yeah. guys, eventually they want to continue getting paid high money and they want to play an extra year longer than the team is willing to pay them that big money. And so they eventually end up somewhere else. I mean, I'll give you an example, George Kittle, and I'm not saying he's leaving or this is the team he would go to. One thing we do know about George Kittle, or we've learned, is that he's a Chicago Bears fan. And he's been talking an awful lot about the Bears offseason and what he thinks they should do around the quarterback position. It's like, well, God, if he went and played one year on his childhood favorite team to end his career, that wouldn't shock me. That wouldn't shock me at all. You know what I mean? Like, this happens all the time across the league. Players that are with one team for a long period of time end up going and playing their final year or two on some obscure team, and that's that, you know? So sure, saying that we I think, think are, all these guys are going to retire 49ers, it's not realistic. So that means naturally they're going to have to make a decision. Like Trent, for me, that's the one where I'm like, probably, yes. Trent Williams, I think, being where he's at, how much left is on his contract, I think Trent probably is like the one guy. The rest of them, it's like, bro, in 10 years, I don't know where Bose is going to be. I don't know what, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's impossible to say that. It's true. And I mean, you, you make a good point. It's just, you know, I just think that this culture is a little bit different and, you know, maybe I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm being unrealistic because I do think a lot of these guys will take discounts to stay here rather than go elsewhere to play just because of that culture. So 